Hello, everybody, Pasolivo family. Welcome to another Friday and another edition of Pasolivo Cooking Cuisine. This time it is a happy hour. Yay! Everybody, are you happy? You're about to be. If you're not happy already, you're about to be happy because we are pairing up with Evan from Refined, and he is going to teach us how to make two different types of cocktails with our goodies. Um, we haven't had a happy hour in way too long. It's been uh, too long to be without some happy hour, right? Right. So this is not only something that you can pull together for yourself, but also something that would be such a cool gift to pull together for mom on Sunday. Hey, everyone, it's Mother's Day on Sunday. Don't tell anybody, except for everybody. Everybody needs to know, it's Mother's Day on Sunday. Get something together for her, please. Get a card, send it out. You've got, you've got like a few minutes. Uh, go get, get a card, get a stamp, and then come back here and watch this. Um, the best ideas, I think, are going on to pasolivo.com and just buying the bundle for the cocktails and shooting it over as a gift and then sending the link hey follow the this follow evan evan's going to show you step by step how to make one of the best cocktails ever you're welcome you've earned it thank you for being a mom thanks for bringing life into this world you know fill in the blanks love you lots all that so that is what we're doing today uh making cocktails giving you fantastic gift ideas for mom and celebrating Friday and the amazing weather we're having right now, or California's having it. I know that we've got viewers from everywhere and I know that um, weather can be all over the place. Uh, like they say, they call it May for a reason. It may be 20 degrees and it might be 90. Here, it is gonna be close to 90 in this weekend. So we're getting our tank tops on people. Uh, and these two cocktails that we have coming up today are perfection for sitting outside with brunch as an after brunch drink um, and uh, as, as, as a cocktail just for sitting back, putting your feet up and enjoying the weekend. Okay, so Evan Bishop is the mixologist that is going to join us today. Uh, he is using, uh, I love it when people do this too, this is so great. He's using so many cool things that just blow your mind. Whenever I'm in the tasting room and I mention cocktails with olive oil, people are like, true, right? And now, I, if I go to a cocktail place, if I go to a, a beautiful bar that touts bespoke cocktails, they better have some olive oil in their kind of gambit for sure. He's using our cilantro lime olive oil He's using our raspberry basil vinegar, our winter ambrosia vinegar, and I know, yes, well, I, I mean, those two right there are cocktails by their own right, but if you bring it in with a mixologist, all of a sudden there's all these special doohickeys you can add to it too, quite like the orange blossom honey, and, oh my gosh, so many good things, uh, the bourbon barrel aged maple syrup. Guys, this is such a fantastic bundle. I mean, with this bundle, you can use do pretty much anything. Um, you can make a salad dressing, you can make a cocktail, you can uh, do tea and breakfast and oatmeal, and you can do your waffles. And this maple syrup brushed on bacon is to die for, but also amazing on pork, on ribs, on um, just you name it. Uh, uh, lamb, uh, yeah, sweet potatoes. This is gonna be playing its part well into Thanksgiving, well into November, well into the fall and winter. But for right now, it's going into cocktails. So we've got such a cool, we've got five items here that are all gonna be pulled together in two cocktails. Guys, I cheat a little bit and I get the real thing, check it. Okay. Can anybody guess what I am showing you? Because there's the two drinks. Which one is which? There we go. How beautiful are those? Okay, so we've got a whiskey sour coming up and I wanna make sure I'm not 
uh, gin gimlet. Okay, so whiskey sour and gin gimlet with our vinegars, with our olive oil, with all kinds of goodness on there. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to seeing how all of this is pulled together. Uh, Evan is gonna be joining us soon and showing us how to do this because honestly, if left to my own devices, <laughs> which often I am, this would go, this is the winter ambrosia, that's apples, pears, and mulling spices in this guy. This would just go with some sparkling water, maybe a little LaCroix, La La maybe, and then some vodka, maybe do a little stir. I don't know what, like some, some, someone's probably gonna yell at me for that. Get it all together somehow, shake it, stir it, I don't know and then drink it. So these guys right here are such beautiful mixers. And as you are well aware, because I've repeated over and over again, these guys are pulled together, grown, built, loved, made in a Tascadero. That is two towns over, guys. That's what, 15 minutes away? Maybe I floor it, I don't know. <laughs> Depends on how you drive. <laughs> 15, 20 minutes away? Um, so these balsam our balsamics, our vinegars, all but one, all pulled together in um, a Tascadero. It's, it's a couple that's just, they're just good people, period. So you just fall in love with them. And then they have this amazing palette. The, their creations are just gorgeous, award-winning in their own right. So definitely worth checking out our different balsamics and vinegars. So they're so fresh, they're organic, they're local. Definitely worth checking out. They pair up so beautifully with our olive oil. This guy right here, the raspberry basil with the cilantro lime. This is my go-to salad dressing for um, taco salads and any type of uh, um, kind of Mexican fiesta type meal that I'm creating. These two together are gorgeous. Uh, just that nice citrus um, brightness lifts up any ground beef or ground turkey that you have, any fattiness that you might have, just elevates and just lightens it up. So those two together, 50-50 in a mason jar, shake it up. That is an amazing salad dressing. A great marinade too. So if you're doing any um, like fajita veggies and fajita steak, put those two into a Ziploc, put all of that into the Ziploc, let it sit and marinate and toss it on the grill. If you're camping, I'm telling you, if you are camping, if you have a trailer, grab the minis. We've got the little mini 200 milliliters that are just adorable. And there's, um, 200, it's 200 milliliters and it's all our vinegars, all our oils you can get in the minis. Perfect for, and then you can cook you till your heart's content and your neighbors are gonna come over and steal your food in a nice way. Hopefully they'll trade you a beer. Hi. Hey, how are you? Good, thank you. Evan, I'm so looking forward to this. Um, I'm a little I, backlit and, and dark, but you'll have to just imagine I'm in as good of lighting as you are. I, I mean, I cheat, I've got one of those things. Um, and also your background is amazing. So I, I, I'm here for it, I like it. <laughs> I, I'm, a little, I'm a little jealous. My, my background is doors, that sucks. Okay, <laughs> well, gosh, uh, which is why- But it I looks good, that's, that's the important thing. It all looks good. <laughs> so. Uh, so you are, I, you went crazy shopping for these cocktails and I, I am so thankful for it because uh, when people come and they're, they're like, we're just going to use the salt. I'm like, oh, bummer, because there's so many other good things you could put into, you know, fill in the blank. And you came in and you went legit. And I am thrilled because all of this, when I bring it out and people are doing the tasting with the, the bread and yeah. then I say, oh, and this can be used as a cocktail. I mean, I got to wait a second for them to right. process. Right. Yeah. And, and that was a challenge for me, honestly. It's, it's kind of why I went with these two classic cocktails, right? The, the Gimlet and the Whiskey Sour is a, a couple of reasons, but one of them was it was a way to take a base cocktail and add some real interest and complexity by adding the vinegar and the olive oil, as opposed to, you know, starting from scratch and just being like, okay, I've got a gin. What am I going to do with olive oil and gin? You know, I could do a martini and, and everything, but this way, one, we're getting to learn all about making a classic sour cocktail, which is so versatile, but then how you can dress that up by adding uh, some other ingredients to it. I, I think that's amazing. When we worked with Yes uh, Craft Cocktail, she was saying, 
I, in, in general, all cocktails are based off maybe like five base cocktails and they kind of just branch out from there, which again, kind of blew my mind, which is why I love this show so much because there's so yeah. much information. But yeah, having something that people can comprehend and then boo, go, you know, taking it to the next level is, is perfect. Right, yeah, at, at Refined, we started our cocktail club be, kind of because of that, because we found people were going out for cocktails, um, but maybe didn't have everything on their back bar or the experience of, of how to mix proportionally. And with these sour cocktails, like you say, like Lauren was saying with yes, is that uh, you can make a whiskey sour, you can make a gimlet, you can make a Tom Collins, you can make a mojito, all of those, the proportions are the same. And so once you start learning those proportions, just tell me what alcohol you have and I'll make you an outstanding cocktail. That's, you know, it seems like I just came up with it, but it's, it's based on that, that simple formula. I mean, I, I think COVID has proven none of us can be trusted to um, make our own cocktails at home. We all were putting vodka in our seltzer. So obviously we can't be trusted. Yeah. We need the bars. <laughs> Uh, yeah. We need we need kits and we need somebody ha holding our hand because we're aware that there are measurement tools and we just have no business around any of that apparently. Yeah. Or <laughs> I, I'll own that. That might be more me than anybody. I don't know. Uh, Is that why you had me mix up the cocktail? <laughs> yeah. No, I can't be trusted. <sighs> I, I'm Love just going to do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, taste it, and then with all the taste testing I do, by the end it's like. Ugh, awesome right <laughs> and it's not right. yeah so thank you thank you because i again can't be trusted uh so which yeah. cocktail do you want to start with out of these two because they're both gorgeous and uh yeah yes i'm gonna kind of let's uh, let's you. start with the gin gimlet okay let's start with the gimlet uh yeah. it's what i often describe as my desert island cocktail if I could only have one cocktail for the rest of my life. Uh, a gimlet would be it. And as you mentioned before, we're adding in uh, the uh, uh, raspberry basil vinegar. Now, yes. shrubs are a big thing. Um, this kind of falls below the threshold of being a, a shrub because I haven't added a lot of the vinegar. So you're not getting those kind of sour notes like you would in like a, a sour beer or, uh, or something like that. Um, and then the uh, cilantro lime olive oil is going in. And speaking to proportions and measurements, uh, one thing that I find interesting is that a lot of cocktail shakers, this little cap is a great measuring device. So you don't have to okay. have ounces and everything because what the sours uh, relate to really is more proportion than ounces or milliliters or anything uh -huh. like that. And so for a typical right. sour, what you're going to do is you're going to have two parts of your alcohol, one part of your citrus, lime, lemon, uh, and one part of your syrup. And in this one, we're using uh, the orange blossom honey I uh, made that as a simple syrup. So that's one part honey to one part water. Yep. Uh, so that's where we're getting our sweet. And then the sour is coming from one part of lime. And the alcohol is coming from two parts of gin. Got it. So uh, we'll start and I'll show you how we're doing this. I've got my shaker. I already added the ice because that's the noisy part. And I'm just going to take this cup. And I'm going to pour two measurements of the cup into my shaker. One measurement. I already squeezed the lime. I cheated a little bit. One measurement of the lime. Lime juice. Got it. That's a lot of lime. Yeah, it is. It is. So, but and again, if you're, if you're thinking out proportionally, with... two, one, and one. Yeah and then one part of our simple syrup. And you can adjust these, you know, if you don't like to have a lot of citrus, a lot of that acid uh, in the cocktail, you can uh, come back on that a little bit. If you are, don't like something really sweet, you can certainly cut back on how much syrup 
you're putting in, uh, but that's the standard proportion. So everyone, if you make it up at home and you're like, oh, that was too sweet, you know, next time make it three quarters instead of a full amount. Um, and again, I'm, I'm saying that in the sense of proportion as opposed to ounces, because I think a lot of people worry about that. Um, and if you have anything, just whatever cup you have, just use that, do one, do two, and you're, you're good to go. And so for the vinegar here, I'm just doing a splash. So maybe half uh, or a quarter um, of the raspberry basil. And I'm going to wait on the olive oil. You're a little bit um, sad because I mixed yours in. And I love the way olive oil looks when it's dripped on top because it doesn't mix in with the spirit. And it creates something beautiful, like a, a, almost you can make a design in the cocktail by just drizzling a little bit of olive oil on top. So we'll shake the cocktail by itself. And we'll pour it up. So now we've got our gimlet. And what I'll do with this, there are a couple different ways you can go, but what I'm gonna do, because I'm doing it for myself, not for a customer, I'm gonna put my thumb right over the top and I'm just gonna put a couple little drips on here. And I'm gonna take my camera off the stand so you can see what I'm talking about with this. But this so is my... fun and this is what really can, if you went out to a bar, and someone poured this for you and you were able to see it, you would think that's a beautiful, I don't care how it tastes, it's a beautiful cocktail. So let's see here. Huh? I turn around and there we oh, go. Oh, wow, look at that. Oh, it looks like a planet. That's so yeah. cool. Oh, wow. That is and so, so a lot awesome. of times, uh, a lot of times cocktails are adding olive oil Oh, he's buffering for a second. <laughs> Olive oil is getting added in to add some body to, uh, to a cocktail. At Refined, because we're using grapes as the base for our cocktails, we don't have to worry about that. We have a lot more body and viscosity. So here I picked the cilantro lime because, oh, it's just a beautiful olive oil. Such great aroma and flavor to it. I debated on whether I should come up with a name for this rather than just a gimlet. If I did, I think it would be uh, the garden gimlet because we're using raspberry and basil and cilantro and lime and we've got all of these great complex flavors mingling in there, so. I love that, really fresh, beautiful for this weather. Uh, mine w did have the oil in there, so it was kind yeah. of shaken up, but it all floats up to the top. So right. it does still have that beautiful kind of, the dots that float up top. I, I it's very visually pleasing. It definitely kind of shows the depth of different flavors and levels that are going to hit your lips and your, your palate at different times. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, it's, cheers. Cheers. Cheers, everyone. It's a good way to start a Friday afternoon. It sure is. Yeah. And I'm constantly blown away. The level of complexity in that is astonishing. There's so many different flavors going on. Yeah. Uh, and like I said, I mean, it hits, I've got a little bit of the lime cilantro on my lips. There's a sweetness, there's that tartness. It's the, there's a little hint of the raspberry in there as well. It's, uh, it's gorgeous. There's so, there's, I would give $10 to somebody who tasted that and was able to tell me all the flavors that were in there <laughs> because there's so much going on and it's just, yeah. this is one of those cocktails that slows you down yeah. and makes you really enjoy it. Um, and it's, it's, it, this isn't one because you're thirsty. This is one that you, um, this is the direct opposite of putting vodka in your seltzer. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, it, this is gorgeous. I love that, that, uh, that balance of, of, flavors and the mouth feel too. I think that's huge. Yeah. And something that's not really, um, uh, people aren't really as aware of that. And mixologists are of course, but as we try to make this stuff at home and try to do stuff at home, uh, we aren't thinking about the fact of how that is going to hit the lips and hit the mouth. Right. This is gorgeous. 
Yeah. And I, I do think that's a, a big thing with um, when people are going out to a uh, to get cocktails at a bar, they're seeing all the work that goes into making their cocktail, their craft cocktail. And there's a lot, but there's some really outstanding cocktails like this. Simple ingredients um, that you can put together real quickly and still have uh, a cocktail as good as if you waited 12 minutes at a bar to have the <laughs> mixologist muddle everything and, and all of that. Um, but yeah. it's, uh, it's, again, it's a classic cocktail that we're really just dressing up with the Paso Levo products. That, uh, and I want to thank you also for giving me basically an uh, empty shopping cart and saying, fill it up. Because it, it made my life so much easier to, to be able to dream and come up with uh, different ideas. Uh, so, so that was great. And I got to, and, and your people there did a great job. Uh, the winter ambrosia that we'll get into next, uh, I didn't even see that. And, uh, and so that was pointed out to me. And it, immediately I went into the idea of a whiskey sour for that. I, I think, um, I mean, we're blessed here in Paso that we have some uh, amazing artists who are passionate about their craft, whatever that looks like. Uh, we've had executive chefs on, we've had distillers on. Um, just having you and seeing that as a, an opportunity that, that says a lot. And I think that speaks for a lot of the people who, who come in and start playing with our products. It, you come in and it's like an artist and every color ever. Yeah. And it's like, oh, I get to paint with any and all of these guys. So yeah. it, you, can, it, you can go wild with it. And, and I, like I said at the beginning of the show, I am highly appreciative of you grabbing bits and pieces from everywhere because um it it does take someone who is passionate and really amazing at their craft to be able to pull something like this together and yeah. have it in unison in something like this that is just uh yeah a piece of work it's just a piece Thank of artwork you. it's amazing so yeah, yeah. it was and that's what we're hoping for is that you'll have fun doing it too and i did i certainly did Good. Okay. And, and I'm going to have fun drinking it. So there you go. It's a win-win. <laughs> um, so on the flip side, uh, we've got the sour, uh, sorry, not the sour, right? The, yeah, yeah the whiskey, whiskey sour. Guy. Yep. Guy. Yeah. Which I'm really excited about. So I'm going to put down so I don't end up sipping it while you're talking. Uh, <laughs> so tell me the, the method behind the madness of, of creating this. Well, it was kind of the same concept of, of taking that idea that we want to go with a classic cocktail um, with simple measurements because, you know, this is great and it's great for people to watch and be excited about the products, whether they be our distilled products or the olive oils and vinegars um, and, and seeing that they're being used in cocktails, but trying to make it understandable and simple enough that uh that people watching this can say oh two one one that's super simple i can make a sour and i don't have refined gin go get it but i don't have refined gin but i have a bottle of tequila on the shelf well it's the same thing you know we're not talking something has to be done completely differently because i've got a vodka versus a gin versus a whiskey these are all uh the same effective recipes and we're just changing the ingredients, but not the proportions. And so in this one, I loved the uh, bourbon barrel aged uh, maple syrup. <laughs> I knew exactly I was making a whiskey sour as soon as I saw that, um, because that just adds such great flavor. I usually with whiskey sours will use a honey because they have a lot more depth than a refined or white sugar or even a demure brown sugar but maple syrup in a bourbon barrel uh, that that was just begging to be made into a whiskey sour uh so yeah so i i was excited about that we're taking same again proportions two parts of the rye whiskey this rye whiskey that we have is uh batch number 10. so uh we started making rye whiskey at refined really the first year uh that alex and monica started the distillery and uh but because it's aged um, you know, it takes a while for it to mature. We didn't release this one until uh, the first release of this until 2014. And uh, we had batches lining up. And so we've been releasing about once a year. And we're at a point now that uh, we're releasing and we have this nearly year round. 
for the rye whiskey. And that's just a, a great thing. It's the first grain-based spirit that we produced at Refined Distillery. Everything before that was all centered around the saunier, the grapes uh, that were coming off of the juice that was coming off of the grapes uh, in wine production. So, uh, My first visit to a distillery was to Refined. And awesome. uh, not only was I floored by the tasting, but I was also really intrigued by the information um, and uh, was really drawn in and kind of un uh, started to get an understanding of why in the wine country are there so many distilleries popping up. Yeah. Um, the still, the, the, the re refined still is just gorgeous. I looked at it and I was like, well, why can't I have one for my house? Cause that's really <laughs> And I like the the sound. It was I feel like it's nice and calming. Like I, that we all need a still in our house. It's huge. It's copper. It's gorgeous. Um, and it, the information that came with the tasting, as well as being able to really appreciate a spirit, a really ma well made spirit. Um, why the hangover is not going to look the same, if any, the next day? Why um, it is small back? All this sort of. Um, why it's uh, sustainable and so positive for the environment and for, yeah. I mean, there, there are so many pluses to it. Yeah. That, um, yeah. Go ahead. So, so to the st sustainability and um, last year, the Saunier that we recovered from all the different wineries that we partner with, um, we recovered the equivalent of about 70 acres worth of grapes that we all otherwise would have thrown away. You know, it's just a part of the process of making better wine is bleeding off juice. And Alex and Monica saw that as an uh, opportunity uh, to recover what we were all otherwise wasting. And that allows refined distillery to allow the wineries that we buy Saunier from to make better wine and know that they're selling that Saunier instead of just throwing it away. And that's a, it's, it's a great win-win for the community. And you think, you know, we otherwise would have to plant additional acres of grapes uh, to survive as either a standalone winery or to use that juice to distill ourselves. And that would make the product even more expensive as well, because planting grapes is not cheap. <laughs> Right, which is why usually if you're getting a vodka, if you're getting a gin, it's going to be a cheaper product, it's cheaper yeah. material because you, yeah, you, you need to make a lot of it. And that's, it's this full circle. That's why you're not going to see people growing grapes specifically to make vodka because right. it would be way too expensive. So they're doing rice, they're doing potatoes, they're doing a, if Wheat. I can say it, lesser quality um, yeah. item uh, because it's cheap and you need a lot of it. Yeah. Uh, but, but here we have a fantastic high quality item already being grown um, and then in turn being created into a spirit. So you, you, the level of quality is already uh, skyrocketed in comparison to any of the store-bought stuff. So it's just, it, yeah, it's kind of a no brainer. It's, it's a, a, amazing. Yeah. And that's, I mean, I, this is stuff that I spout in the tasting room all the try, time to shoving people over to you guys, because yeah. it's, it's definitely an experience and a learning experience as well. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that, that is one of the big things we focus on at Refined is education. And, uh, and in the sense of learning why we're doing it, how we're doing it. And, uh, and it's really, uh, it really does, again, going back to the, the idea of a cocktail club um, and making these cocktails in particular is um, I could have come in and, and made something brand new and, you know, my idea and concept again with this was to not worry about, uh, you know, specific measurements, muddling and, and all of these complex things, which are great. And you can definitely go out. I mean, go to a restaurant and you get an outstanding meal that you could never make at home. Right. Um, but to know the basics of, of cooking is great and if you're you're stuck and you need to make pasta real quickly it's great to know how to boil water and <laughs> how to make uh you know a, a marinara but um if you're ready we can get into the uh the whiskey sour yes please let's now, i have a question for you have you tasted it yet did you cheat on me no i did not 
I did Good. not. I smelled it just then, but I I try not to take a sip until the very end when we're here. Good, we because uh, because you have a, a secret ingredient that I don't have in mine, and I'll tell you about that uh, when and it is a Pasoliva product. So uh, as with the gin, we're going to do the same thing. Two parts. My sheep are going crazy right now. <laughs> I was thinking I the same thing about my chickens, actually. So that's very Paso of us. <laughs> uh, so I've got two parts of the rye, uh, two parts of the maple brown syrup, or maple uh, bourbon barrel aged syrup. So you're two not making this into, you're not watering it down, you're not doing anything, you're putting it straight in. Correct. Yep. Okay. Yep. Lots of flavor in there, and it's not as viscous as the honey is. Right. So uh, you're not worrying about it thickening up, thickening up the cocktail too much. Got it. Now with this one, the rye I felt stood up to the vinegar. And because it's got such great flavor to it, I really wanted to add more to this. So this I'm doing a full part of. Um, so two parts rye, one part uh, simple, which will the uh, brown, the maple bourbon barrel aged syrup. Uh, one part of the, uh, sorry, lemon, okay. and then one part of the vinegar. Yeah, so two, one, one, one in this case. And then put it in, we're shaking this up. This is a great shaker, by the way. This is, I forget the name of it. Uh, it's not gonna be real helpful if I don't remember the name, but it has an integrated jigger uh, measurement inside and it's double walled, so oh, it yeah. doesn't, the Ice doesn't melt, it doesn't get cold as you're shaking it, and the top is threaded so it doesn't, uh, it doesn't get stuck on there. So for this one, I'm actually not gonna strain it. I'm gonna put it in with the ice, just as you did. And for garnish here, a peel of lemon, a uh, leaf of sage would be great with it as well. Um, and so now, Cheers. Super Cheers. simple. What did that take? 35 seconds to mix that up? Very simple. Yeah. Oh, man. That is so good. Any spiciness for you? Right at the very end, there's a little, there's a little heat. So I That's added, amazing. I'm not crazy about spicy cocktails, but they're kind of all the rage. So okay. I added a bit of your sriracha sea salt to it. Oh. And salt in cocktails, just like in cooking, it amplifies flavors. So uh, you get that little bit of salinity in there, but then you also get that little spiciness from the sriracha in there. And that's Ooh. just a pinch in there. You can obviously do a rim to the glass, but I love actually incorporating it right into the cocktail. And, and I do feel like there's a little bit more, more depth to it. it. It's balancing out the, the sweetness of the maple syrup. Yep. Uh, wow. Ooh, I like that. So that was just a little pinch. Just, just a pinch. Yep. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yep. Huh. Oh, oh. It's, and again, really refreshing. I kind of expected this one to be a little bit heavier, more of a like winter drink and a cocktail. cigar kind of thing. Yep. And this is not, it's still really nice and light. It's um, beautifully complex again um, because of the different, the, the maple syrup. Yeah. Just tasting so it, just, it's almost a shame to put it on pancakes. I feel like it's a waste because you, there's yeah. so many other things you can do with it. Better to put it in a cocktail, right? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Agreed. It's a right. breakfast cocktail, people. Yep. There's, there's fruit, there's maple syrup in here. This yep. is, I mean, there's, I mean, this is apples, pears, and mulling spices. So you've got like a little nod to like a cinnamon and nutmeg in there a little bit, just a bit. Yep. Uh, yeah. So you're getting all those nice, that nice fruity note in, in there from the, we, I have somebody who joined the club specifically for the vinegars because yeah. she made cocktails out of them. So it's oh, basically yeah. a mixer club that she joins. Yeah, right, right, <laughs> right. And, um, and that vinegar still, it, it uh, again, I'm about doubling as much vinegar as I put into the gimlet. Mm -hmm. But that's again, because I felt like the rye stood up to the vinegar much better than the gin did. Yeah. So you don't still get that real uh, sour 
uh, note from the vinegar. It, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't come through as, as hit you in the face. And I think we all have developed a palate because we've got the kombuchas out there. We've got hard mm -hmm. kombuchas out there. We're, we've got the IPAs that have that bitterness. So we've developed more of a palate around the sour, the bitter, um, and more of an appreciation for all of that that, uh, that makes this make sense, uh, you know, in, in a cocktail. Ta-da, yeah. guys, look at or this. Two. Or two. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's good to yeah. have choices in life on a Friday, um, but I don't think I'd choose just one because yeah. that's unnecessary. Again, it's a Friday. It's because it's Friday. Well, so, you've got both now. So I've got both go. now, so my hands are tied. I guess I get both. <laughs> yeah. So, Evan, it, uh, Refined is now open and refined is the the brainchild of alex and monica villacana who own yes. villacana winery i right. will say uh i i was all excited about the distillery and i stumbled on to falling in love with the villacana wines the yeah. wines yeah. are extremely enjoyable they um they're they, they've got a fantastic range um and and i've always found all of the staff there people that i just want to hug Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's the booze. Possibly. <laughs> Maybe it's a little bit of both. Yeah. But then there's a dog there, too, or there was. Buddy. Uh, Buddy's there, yep. Yeah. So, I mean, if you guys get a chance to do some wine tasting, hit up a distillery, this is the distillery to start off with, at very least, uh, because you will get that information. You will get that background. They've been doing it the longest, I want to say, here in Paso, or the longest for mm -hmm. open to, to sales. Is yeah, so first legal distillery, um, and and that was really, I think there were some other distilleries. That Bethel Road might have had their license longer, but they didn't have a still. We were the Got first it. ones that were actually producing here, and that was started in 2011. Okay. Um, uh, so right around the same time as uh, Red Souls. Um, so Got real, it. real close okay. together, but we're up to over a dozen distilleries in this county now. And a lot of them attached or, or in relation to wineries doing a lot of the same things, taking that excess juice that's not being used and repurposing that as another premium product. And so, to, to clarify for people, it is not the bad stuff. It's not no. the old stuff. It's not. No. no. So just to clarify, so people aren't thinking, oh, they're taking the the old waste. grapes or the bad grapes. No. no. It's not the case. No. So the idea is in red wine, and so we're only using red wine juice. In red wine, color and texture comes from the skins of the grapes. Juice is actually clear until it touches the skins. So if a winemaker wants to make deeper, richer, more extractive wines, oftentimes what they'll do is they'll bleed a percentage of juice off in order to get more contact with the skins with the remaining juice. And that's what Alex was doing. He was sometimes bleeding as much as 30% total volume from harvest. And prior to distilling, that was being thrown away. Perfectly good juice, just too much to make the wine that we wanted to make. And by starting the distillery, we were able to uh, make as much as possible from the grapes we were growing. The best wine we could, taking that excess juice and turning it into vodkas and gins. I mean, it's... You, you take some excess stuff and you make it into yummy stuff. Premium That's, product, yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah, yeah, and really good stuff. So, um, folks, if you are planning a trip to Paso, you probably are uh, at some point. If you live here and you just need that visitor to come visit and just get yourself out. Say, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a weekday, weekend, whatever. Let's get myself out. Get out there. Check out their wines. Check out the distillery because you're going to learn a lot. And it's right there. It's that Adelaide. Yep. Is that Adelaide? That's Adelaide. Right there. We're okay, the first, Adelaide. first winery on the left down Adelaide on the Road. Side. Right there. And yep. it's up the hill. And you, it's just a really welcoming spot. You can sit outside. You can go inside. Uh, what are the hours? So right now we're Thursday through Sunday by appointment. And it's uh, 11 to 5. I think our last seating is at 4.30. And so that usually we're, we're finishing up our tastings uh, between 5.30 and 6. Um, the weather's been beautiful lately, so no excuse to not come out and enjoy it. We're still fully outside for our tastings. 
So we haven't started doing a uh, limited tasting inside, but that's probably coming mid June. We'll start uh, doing, seeing what that looks like and, and doing some indoor tastings, but we'll still include the option for outdoor tastings as well. Um, we are still limited to six people per party, but uh, you can make uh, reservations online at refineddistillery.com. Perfect. Okay, so go onto their website, check it out. Uh, sitting outside, honestly, I think this has been one of the few positives out of COVID was just realizing what we had at our fingertips yeah. uh, and uh, creating an outside space. And frankly, I don't want to be inside anywhere. It's gorgeous outside. We have, we're in a beautiful area. There's no reason to put walls around us. So uh, that makes sense to me uh, until it hits triple digits and then maybe we'll get it. You're right. Well, we have <laughs> misters. We have misters. So oh, we're good. oh, even better. Yeah. Yep. Ladies, don't wear white t-shirts. Or do. <laughs> Whatever. That's generally a good rule when wine tasting anyway. <laughs> it's, it's true. That is true. That's a good rule of thumb across the board. Yeah. Um, or, you know, or again, or do. do yeah. You do. Uh, so <laughs> thank you so much for joining us and showing us how to make uh, a top level cocktail easy. Um, yes. And you had mentioned the cocktail club, so I want to make sure... I mentioned the cocktail club. Yeah. Refined has a cocktail club. Yes. And so you can do this with our stuff and you can also do it with their stuff and they will pull together mixers as well. So you will just get the recipe and all the ingredients sent to you. Yep. And let me tell you, I have fallen in love. There are some staple cocktails that I have fallen in love with. The, the cocktail, uh, the um, cucumber vodka um, cocktail that has the dill mixer from the delicious uh, from cocktail. Bars. Yes. Oh, so good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So great on the summer day when out. it's super hot and yes. it's dangerously refreshing. You'll drink two of those and not even realize it. It's no, really yeah. good. That's yeah. you. I were you there? Because that's exactly what happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I stopped it too, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, definitely worth checking out this, the, the cocktail club. Something that's fun for you, treat yourself, guys. Uh, I think if this past year has taught us anything, it's to take care of yourselves and treat yourselves. Isn't it nice to open the door and see something exciting waiting for you and something that you gifted yourself yeah. uh, or others, but mainly yourself. Uh, so definitely look into that because that's such a fun thing that will turn up at your doorstep and you'll be able to play and be your own mixologist. Yeah. And um, back away from the seltzers for a bit. Just yeah. saying, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for joining us today. It was a, a pleasure. I love the background and I loved how you pulled it all together. I'm going to sit here in my, my happy area and uh, drink my cocktails now. Well, I'm going to so. see what the sheep are complaining about, but then I'm going to get back to drinking <laughs> these cocktails. <laughs> that sounds good. They're probably jealous. <laughs> thank you for having us. Thank you for sharing and uh, giving me the opportunity to play. Yes. And, uh, and come up with these cocktails. It was it was a blast, and and we had a great time with it. Uh, it's yeah. I mean, we're I, we consider ourselves Paso strong. We want to make sure that we're all supporting each other, and it's really easy because we have such good people around us. So a it's lot not here like, for sure. Yeah, we yeah. are lucky. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Have a fantastic weekend. Have a great well. rest of your Friday. I'm going to cover a little bit about what we're doing next week, um, but uh, I think everybody else is going to be hopping online and doing Perfect. some purchasing. Um, I'm assuming, are you guys shooting booze out into the world still? Is that something you guys oh, yeah. are able to do? <gasps> yes. You're shipping? Yes. Yes. Okay. We are Fantastic. shipping. And, and in fact, we are now currently able to ship the rye uh, that we weren't able to do pre-COVID. So if you want to say there's another silver lining, uh, we'll see if that, if that lasts, if we can do it once everything gets back to 100%. Or not, but currently, yes, everything that we produce uh, from the lemoncello to the rye whiskey, uh, all of that can be ordered and shipped to you. And we even do cocktail kits so you can check to see uh, different mixers. Those are all ones that we have vetted at Refine. We, we work very hard to make sure we're making the best cocktails that we can send out. So, yeah, we have cocktail kits you can order or just the, uh, just the spirits. Perfect. Okay. I mean, that, yes. So... Go on to PasoLevo.com, get this bundle, and then hop on to RefineDistillery.com, and then get yourself your rye and your gin 
and it's a match made in heaven. And again, Mother's Day this Sunday, guys, this is a yes. perfect gift. Get yes. it all together for them. All right. Have a fantastic weekend, guys. Appreciate it. Uh, Thank you for having next me. Next week. Bye. Go check on those poor sheep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, next week, we are going to be working with the wine merchant um, from the Paso Market Walk. So we've had a few people from the Paso Market Walk. We've had the Vreemery. We've had Leo Leo Gelato. We are now going to be working with Chef Justin, who's going to be creating a signature um, menu item with our olive oil. I hear it might be our Tuscan extra virgin olive oil and possibly that Olio Nuovo that some of you know about. If you don't, Google it because it is liquid gold and there's a few bottles left, so worth checking out. Um, but uh, Chef Justin's going to be pulling a uh, meal together or some menu items together for us. And I'm hoping pairing them up with some good wine since they are with the wine merchant. So he's going to uh, pull some wine pairings together with that um, menu item that he's going to teach us how to make. So get your apron on and get cooking with us next Friday. That is May 14th. Um, and we will talk to you then. I look forward to seeing you next week, May 14th, two o'clock, same place, same time. Um, but until then, enjoy your weekend, get out there, enjoy that vitamin D, get that sun on you and hug your mom. Take care of yourself. If you are a mom, treat yourself, um, buy yourself a card, get yourself a flower or just um, put some, some ear pods in and turn off for a little bit and make yourself a cocktail. Happy weekend. Bye guys.